Hi all. So in this video, we are going to see about the dorsal column pathway, which is a must know for every medical student. Okay. So what is meant by the dorsal column pathway? So dorsal column pathway is also called posterior column medial lemniscal pathway. It's a major sensory pathway responsible for transmitting fine touch, proprioception and vibration sense from the body to the cortex. So basically it is an ascending pathway because it is going to carry sensations from the body to the cortex, right? And what are the sensations that are going to be carried by the dorsal column pathway? They're going to carry the fine touch, proprioception and vibratory sensation. So these are the major three sensations that are going to be carried by the dorsal column pathway. Now in Guyton, we've got an exhaustive list or you've got a, you know, a very detailed list of the sensations that are going to be carried by the dorsal column pathway. We'll just see what they are. So uh, dorsal column pathway will carry touch sensation requiring transmission of fine gradations of intensity or in simpler terms, it is going to carry your fine touch, right? Then it will carry pressure sensations related to fine degrees of judgment of pressure, which in simpler terms is your pressure sensation. Then it's going to carry phasic sensations such as vibratory sensation. So again, fine touch, pressure and vibration. Okay. And it is going to carry touch sensation requiring high degree of localization of stimulus. So what does that mean? See, this means your two point discrimination and tactile localization. So these are two important sensations which are basically cortical sensations. So these are carried by dorsal column pathway and sensations that signal movement against the skin. What does that mean? These include your stereognosis. St what is stereognosis? Stereognosis is basically identifying family objects when they are placed on the palm and graphesthesia. What is graphesthesia? You write an alphabet or any pattern on the palm or uh, on the surface of the skin and the subject will be able to identify what that letter is. And finally, the position sense from the joints, which is otherwise called proprioception, proprioception. Okay. So if you're asked to list the sensations carried by the dorsal column pathway, you can list it like this. Fine touch, proprioception, vibration, tactile localization, two point discrimination, stereognosis and pressure sensation. So these are the sensations carried by the dorsal column pathway. Next, so what are the receptors needed for this? So we know that in our body, we've got receptors for the mechanical stimuli. You've got the cutaneous receptors. You've got receptors for the vibratory sense, the pressure sense for proprioception. So here you can mention the names of those receptors. So first one is the mesner's corpuscles, which detect fine touch and low, vib low frequency vibration. Merkel disc, which is essential for detection of sustained pressure. Piscinian corpuscles for deep pressure and high frequency vibration. Rough knees endings that is going to detect skin stretch and deformation. Muscle spindles which detect change in muscle length and contraction and Golgi tendon organ which uh, detect changes in muscle tension. So these two are basically your proprioceptors which is going to tell you what the uh, position of the body or the muscle or joints is. Okay. So these are the receptors involved in dorsal column pathway. So now we'll see about how to draw the dorsal column pathway. What is its origin, cause and termination? So like in any other path, we can draw the midline and then the cut section of the different parts of the central nervous system like the cerebral cortex with the thalamus, the pons, the mid midbrain, pons and medulla. And then you can draw the cut section of the spinal cord at least at two levels. One is cervical and other the sacral. It is always good if you can draw all the four cut sections like cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacral. But at least draw two of them, cervical and sacral. Okay, so now we'll see uh, how to draw the uh, dorsal column pathway. So we know the sensations that are going to be carried and what are the receptors that are going to be involved in this pathway. So when these receptors, suppose we are going to take the lower limb. When these receptors are stimulated on the lower limb, what happens? The nerve fibers, especially via the A alpha and A beta fibers will carry that information. And the first order neuron is going to be through the from the periphery. The first order neuron will begin with the cell body in the dorsal root ganglion. So this is the dorsal root ganglion. The first order neuron will have the cell body in the dorsal root ganglion. And the first order neuron is going to ascend up the 
posterior column of the spinal cord. See this part here is the posterior column of the spinal cord. So this first order neuron is going to ascend up the posterior column of, of the spinal cord to reach the medulla. Okay. So this area of the posterior column through which these fibers from the leg passes is called the fasciculus gracilis. So see this is the medial part of the posterior column and it is called fasciculus gracilis. Now suppose the sensation is arising from your hand. So what happens? Again, the, the nerve fiber, the first order neuron from the hand is going to, going to go up via the posterior column but that will be more lateral when compared to the fibers from your leg. So that part is called fasciculus cuneatus. So it is more lateral and it is called fasciculus cuneatus. So remember the, uh, the part from the sacral portion will be more medially and part from the cervical portion will be more laterally. So now this is called the somatotopic organization. What is somatotopic organization? So see, if I am going to take um, a small section of that posterior column of spinal cord, see here I said this is the fasciculus gracilis and this is the fasciculus cuneatus, right? So here the somatotopic organization is like this. That means here is your sacral, here are your lumbar fibers, here are your thoracic fibers and here are your cervical fibers. So this is how the fibers are arranged. And this is the spinal cord. Okay, That is why fibers from the leg was shown more medially while the fibers from the hand was shown more laterally. Clear? So that is a somatotopic organization at the level of the posterior column. So this is our first order neuron. And where does it synapse? Where does this end? It is going to end at the lower part of the medulla where it is going to synapse at two nucleus and that is called nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. Nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. Okay. So now the second order neuron is going to start from this nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. It is going to cross over to the other side. See the neurons from here, the second order neuron is going to cross over to the opposite side and then going to ascend. So these fibers that are going to cross over, they are called the internal arcuate fibers. They are called the internal arcuate fibers. So these fibers which cross over, they are going to ascend up as the medial lemniscus. It is going to ascend up as a medial lemniscus. That is why this pathway is also called posterior column medial lemniscus pathway. Okay. So these fibers are going to ascend up. The second order neuron is going to ascend up as medial lemniscal pathway and it is going to finally end at the thalamus. Right? It is going to end, the second order neuron is going to end at the thalamus. So here I have just shown the uh, fibers from the leg. I'll, now we will see the fibers from the upper lip also. Here you can see that they have crossed over and now the upper limb fibers are more medial when, when compared to the lower limb fibers. Okay? So this is how it will ascend up. So remember this is called the internal arcuate fibers and they ascend up as the medial lemniscus finally to reach the thalamus. So there is a specific nucleus of the thalamus where they are going to synapse. And what is that? It is the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of thalamus. They are going to synapse at the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus. Right? So there your second order neuron will end and finally you've got the third order neuron which is going to arise from the thalamus to the somatosensory cortex. From the thalamus to the somatosensory cortex that is the third order neuron. So in the cortex also you know we've got this sensory homunculus right and here the in sensory homunculus the upper limb is more laterally while the lower limb is more medially. So lower limb fibers are going to go up here like this whereas the upper limb fibers are going to go more laterally like this. Okay. So the main uh, area where they go, the third on neuron is going to synapse is the primary somatosensory area or area S1. There are fibers that are going to S2 also. So both S1 mainly to primary somatosensory area or S1 and then to uh, area S2. So this is the diagram of the dorsal column pathway. So whenever a pathway is asked, you have to write about the origin, cause and termination. So here what was the origin? I said when the receptors of a part is stimulated, of the skin is stimulated, it is going to pass through the nerve fibers mainly A alpha and A beta 
and the first order neuron has its cell body in the dorsal root ganglion and this neuron is going to enter via the dorsal root of spinal cord remember your sensory part of spinal cord is a dorsal root right so it is going to enter the dorsal root of spinal cord and then ascend up via the fasciculus gracilis so they originate from the receptor travel in the peripheral nerve to reach the spinal cord via the dorsal root and the cell bodies are located in the dorsal root ganglia and what about its course see here we said that it is going to ascend up the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus depending on from which part of the body it is going to enter so the first order neuron from the dorsal root ganglion it is going to ascend in the dorsal column which is called the fasciculus gracilis see there is another term for fasciculus gracilis it is also called the tract of gall because it was the scientist gall who was uh, behind the discovery of this tract so it is also called the tract of gall and fasciculus cuneatus is also called the column of burdak column of burdak so that is why this in some books they have also mentioned this tract as gall and burdak tract okay so cuneatus is also called column of burdak and they are going to ascend up this fasciculus and synapse in the dorsal column nuclei which is nuclei gracilis and nucleus cuneatus so nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus so that is the course of the first order neuron right what about second order neuron i said second order neuron is going to cross to the opposite side where they form the internal arcuate fibers and then going to ascend up as a medial lemniscus so second order neurons from the dorsal column nuclei they are going to form the internal arcuate fibers ascend up as medial lemniscus and going to reach the ventro posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus ventro posterior nucleus lateral nucleus of the thalamus okay and what about the third order neurons third order neurons are going to ascend from this uh, vpl nucleus thalamus to somatosensory areas 1 and 2 of the cerebral cortex so here remember the somatotopic organization at the cortex also so uh, the fibers from the leg is going to synapse more medially while the fibers from the upper limb is going to synapse more laterally and finally termination so this is the primary somatosensory area remember it is the in the parietal loop behind the central gyrus so that is why uh, so behind the central sulcus that is why it is called the post central gyrus clear so primary sensory cortex also known as a post central gyrus so that is the primary somatosensory area and you've got a secondary somatosensory area also which is located posterior to s1 so this is the origin cause and termination of the dorsal column pathway now here you also have to know about some applied aspects one important uh, applied aspect is a romberg sign what is romberg sign it is the inability to maintain a balance standing with feet together and eyes closed so see basically when the dorsal column is affected the patient will be unable to maintain a balance standing position with the eyes closed they will tend to sway to the affected side so that is romberg sign and there is another syndrome called brown sequard syndrome in which again the dorsal column pathway might be affected so you have to uh, you know read about these two uh, applied aspects of dorsal column pathway and you can finally draw that diagram make sure you write about the sensations carried the receptors and and, the, and what happens at the different levels don't forget to mark the first order second order and third order neurons and the other important terminologies that will come in the pathway clear so i hope this concept is clear thank you